Hi there, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John and in this video we're going to take a close up look at the RTX 3060 Ti and the RTX 3070. These two cards form part of Nvidia's new Ampere lineup. They can be quite closely matched in performance and even sometimes price. So we'll take a closer look at the performance to see which is right for your build. Nvidia's Ampere's launch has brought a large step forwards in performance at every price point. The three mainstream cards currently released, the RTX 3060 Ti, RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 all excel in high resolutions and the most demanding current games. The RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3070 are closest in specification and price, with the RTX 3060 Ti priced at around $400 and the RTX 3070 starting at $500 for the various partner cards. In this review we'll take an in-depth look at these two cards to find out which is going to be best for your needs. We've run hundreds of benchmarks and spent many hours tweaking these GPUs to best inform you of their relative strengths, so let's dig in. The main similarity between these cards is in their memory specification. Both have 8GB of GDDR6 memory operating at 448GB a second bandwidth across a 256-bit bus. They forgo the faster GDDR6X memory specification of the RTX 3080. The differences lie in the core. Whilst both use the GA104 core, the RTX 3060 Ti makes do with a cut down version of it. The RTX 3070 has 5,888 shader units, 184 tensor cores, and 46 race racing cores. It boosts to around 1,725 MHz. The RTX 3060 Ti has 1,000 fewer shader units at 4,864, 152 tensor cores, and 38 ray tracing cores. It also boosts slightly lower in reference specification to 1665 MHz. In operation, both of these cards comfortably exceed their reference boost clocks. So in real terms, we're looking for a performance commensurate with these key specification differences. To test this, we've got our hands on an example of each card. The RTX 3060 Ti is a Zotac Twin Edge OC, a twin fan two slot model. This card claims a 1695 MHz boost clock but our example self-boosts to sustain 1860 MHz and is unusual in that it's a pure two-slot design and relatively short at just 222mm long. Other than that, it has the same specifications as any other RTX 3060 Ti. The RTX 3070 is EVGA's XC3 Ultra model. It's a three-fan card with a 2.2-slot thick cooler and EVGA claim a boost clock of 1770 MHz for this model, but in fact it self-boosts to 1950 MHz happily and will sustain a 2150 MHz boost when overclocked. All tests were conducted on an identical test rig. The system comprises of a Ryzen 5800X CPU with power boost overdrive enabled, an MSI Morta B550 motherboard, and 16GB of RAM clocked at 3600MHz CL16 and operating in dual channel mode. The power supply is a 650W Antec unit. A note on how we test. These tests are conducted on what we consider real-world settings, that is, high or highest unless the very highest settings are a serious detriment to performance. We're aiming to present to you the card's performance as close as possible to how you will experience them in your own PC, whilst playing the games that you love. The tests are completely standardised and identical in each benchmark, so the cards are being tested like for like. First let's check out some synthetic benchmarks, to see how the GPUs perform in a standardised test, and also to verify that our examples are comparable to the other versions. We'll also take a quick look at overclock performance, just to see how much performance there is on the table, although this isn't an in-depth look at overclocking these cards. We've included the GTX 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 Ti for reference. In Firestrike we can see the clear segmentation between these cards. The stock 3060 Ti matches the 1080 Ti in this DirectX 11 test that renders at 1080p. The 3070 makes good its promise of matching the RTX 20 Ti, whilst the 3080 sits in a league of its own at the top. You can see that an overclock adds a little to the RTX 3070 and 3060 Ti, but it doesn't bridge the gap between them and the next card up. We've added 150 MHz to the 3060 Ti core speed and 400 MHz to memory speed to obtain this result. The RTX 3070 overclocked 200 MHz on the core and 400 MHz on the memory as well. TimeSpy is a DirectX 12 benchmark and renders at 1440p. This favours the Ampere cards and they come into their own with the 3060 Ti clearly beating the 1080 Ti. The RTX 3070 perfectly brackets the RTX 2080 Ti with its stock and overclocked configuration, whilst again the RTX 3080 sits at the top over 2000 points clear. To evaluate ray tracing performance we can look at the Port Royal benchmark. This yields a single score based on the overall GPU performance. Here again we see the RTX 3080 to clear lead, but focusing in on the RTX 3060 Ti, we can see it's a thousand points short of the RTX 3070, and an overclock does little to help. The 3070 gains a little more from an overclock, 
but still falls a little way short of the claimed RTX 2080 Ti beating claim. How does this translate into actual gaming performance though? Let's take a look at some games, first of all starting with first person shooters. Looking first at Call of Duty Warzone, this shows how capable both of these GPUs are at 1080p and 1440p, and even at 1440p ultra wide we're still around 144 fps, making full use of a high refresh rate monitor. We're using high settings here so you're not even sacrificing fidelity for speed, and you could push frame rates higher with lower settings. This game is actually heavily dependent on CPU as well, so if it's the game you care about, you'll get better results with the 3060 Ti and a great CPU than you would with a 3070 and a compromised CPU. By 4K we're struggling to exceed 100 frames per second, so I wouldn't recommend these GPUs or playing Warzone in 4K on them. Note how close the two GPUs remain across the board with just 10 to 15 frames per second separating them at each resolution. Rainbow Six Siege is even faster paced, and again both GPUs exceed 240 FPS at 1080p, 1440p and 1440p ultra wide. They even exceed 144 frames per second at 4K, and this is on very high settings across the board. Again we see limited performance improvement from the additional spend on an RTX 3070, and CPU performance is always going to be more important here. Finally, as an example of a well-optimised first person shooter, Doom Eternal shows strong scaling both with hardware and resolution. Again, we see very high frame rates of around 300 frames per second average on 1080p, over 200 for both the RTX 3060 Ti and 3070 at 1440p, and well over 144 frames per second at 1440p ultra wide. Here, about 20 frames per second separates the 3060 Ti and 3070 with settings like for like, but realistically the difference to the players of 205 frames per second versus 225 frames per second is minimal. Both provide an excellent experience and exceed the refresh rates of very high performance monitors. That's at 1440p and 1440p ultra wide, and it does very well at 4K as well. Moving on then to AAA titles, this is where we perhaps see a little bit more separation between the two cards. Red Dead Redemption's inbuilt benchmark gives us an insight into the demands of current games. These have all been run at identical settings, a mix of high and ultra, and favouring visual quality to best show off the game's graphics. In reality, you can drop settings for more performance at no real cost to the visual quality of the game. Nonetheless, exceeding 60 frames per second is our target here. Even at 1080p we see the average below 100 frames per second. That's a function both of the demands of the game, but also the fact that the rendering pipelines in Ampere are set up to be more efficient at higher resolutions, so you're not seeing their full potential at 1080p. Moving on to 1440p, both GPUs exceed 60 frames per second, but the 3070 scores 87 frames per second to the 3060 Ti's 69 frames per second. Nice. Both are totally playable, but you can see that you will have to lower settings a bit more on the 3060 Ti for equivalent performance. Manually forcing settings to high, except keeping textures at ultra, sees performance lift to 81 frames per second on the 3060 Ti, but it keeps the game's visual flair intact. At 1440p ultra wide, again we see that both remain playable, but there's a hit to the performance with 59 frames per second on the 3060 Ti and 68 on the RTX 3070. Again, moving to high in place of ultra on the 3060 Ti equals the 3070's performance here, and both GPUs remain very enjoyable to play. At 4K, still on ultra, we're seeing 45 and 50 frames per second respectively, and this will probably look jarring to many people. We need a mix of medium and high settings on the 3060 Ti, and high and ultra on the 3070 to hit 60 frames per second average. Getting the very best out of titles like Red Dead 2 at 4K needs more GPU power, but if you're willing to accept some compromises to settings, either card plays acceptably well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is either less ambitious or just better optimised than Red Dead Redemption 2 depending on your point of view. It still delivers true state-of-the-art visuals. At highest settings you're getting the full effect, and at 1080p you can see both GPUs comfortably exceed 144 frames per second. At 1440p both are just above 100 frames per second, with the 3070 Ti around 15 frames per second ahead, but this is an excellent result for both cards. Moving up to ultra wide, we're at 81 and 94 frames per second respectively, again close enough not to see a vast difference when gaming, and within reach of a few setting tweaks to equal performance. At 4K we fall under the 60 frames per second target, with the 3060 Ti struggling a little at 54 frames per second, but the 3070 managing 63 frames per second average. The game will play acceptably well at 4K on these cards, and this is at very highest settings. Note that all of these benchmarks were run with both the ray tracing shadows and DLSS set to off. Finally, Flight Simulator 2020 requires a brutal mix of top-end graphical power and CPU power to generate its next-gen gaming experience. You can see that by the fact we're CPU limited at 1080p high settings on both cards, with GPU utilisation rarely exceeding 90%. This test comprises a 3 minute low level flight over Manhattan, and just over 60 frames per second average is the highest performance possible on this system, not even an RTX 3080 exceeds it. It's limited by the Ryzen 5800X.
At 1440p and 1440p ultrawide, the 3070 takes a 10% lead over the 3060 Ti, and it extends it to more like 20% at 4K. Both of these GPUs are exceptionally capable in this title at 1440p and 1440p ultrawide, and you can mix ultra and high settings for stunning scenery and nearly 60 frames per second performance. Like first-person shooters, this is a title that actually needs careful consideration of the whole system to get the best performance out of it. Much of the hype around these next-generation Ampere cards has focused on Cyberpunk 2077. This is thanks to its very demanding graphics, and also its implementation of the RTX and DLSS 2.0 technologies from NVIDIA. Whilst we have spent significant time playing and testing it, we don't feel it's ready for anything more than a qualitative assessment at the moment. Performance is changing all the time with various fixes and updates, hopefully for the better. Similarly, the complexities of performance variations with RTX on or off, and the various DLSS settings, by their nature make it largely a matter of opinion as to what you prefer. DLSS is also somewhat of a black box. AI powered upscaling by its nature is hidden from the user, and it provides remarkable results, but ones that may feel a little strange to players not accustomed to it. We're planning a more in-depth look at these features soon, but for now, let's consider it like this. Do these GPUs allow you to play and enjoy the game, and does the RTX 3070 offer a significant advantage over the RTX 3060 Ti? Both GPUs allow 60 plus frames per second in game without using RTX or DLSS at 1440p. Using RTX for lighting and reflections means that you need DLSS on to achieve acceptable performance on either GPU. But even the 3060 Ti manages 60 frames per second with DLSS in balanced mode, rendering it at an internal resolution of 960p and upscaling to 1440p. It looks remarkably good doing this, and it's likely going to come down to personal preference how you want to play the game. The RTX 3070 is powerful enough to also run RTX shadows and higher quality RTX lighting and maintain 60 frames per second, or simply hit higher frame rates with those settings turned off. There's so much customization built into just the RTX and DLSS settings that you're bound to find a compromise that works for you, and this goes for either GPU. At 1440p ultrawide, both cards begin to struggle to hit 60 frames per second, and at 4K, you're either looking at maximising assistance from DLSS or unacceptable performance, particularly on the RTX 3060 Ti. RTX isn't really viable on this GPU at 4K, with frame rates dropping to the 30s. With RTX off and DLSS set to balanced, the RTX 3060 Ti is still capable of 60 frames per second at 4K, showing the value of that upscaling technology. For Cyberpunk 2077, then, at 1440p, either card provides an excellent experience, and you'll enjoy playing the game. At 1440p ultrawide or 4K, we'd recommend an RTX 3080 if you want to experience the full gamut of next-gen graphics that this game has to offer. Let's talk about the value of these two cards. Value is, of course, relative. If you want the higher performance of the RTX 3070, and you're prepared to pay for it, then that represents good value to you. However, looking at the various performance differences, we see that the RTX 3070 is around 10% faster at 1080p on average, 12 to 14% faster at 1440p and 1440p ultrawide, and 15% faster on average at 4K. However, it's 20% more expensive at suggested retail price. Further, as we've shown in these tests, the RTX 3060 Ti is just as capable as the RTX 3070, and it's often just a case of slight settings tweaks to bring the cheaper card up to the same level of performance. Factors like the identical VRAM specification make it even harder to separate them. If you want the best value, then that's clearly the RTX 3060 Ti. If you're prepared to pay for that slightly richer visual experience or extra performance, then the RTX 3070 brings that to the table for around $100 more. Make sure, though, that you're not overpaying, particularly for the RTX 3060 Ti. So what are my conclusions then from these tests? Well, first of all, at 1080p, you're really not getting the best value out of either of these cards. Ampere's architecture is set up such that it excels at higher resolutions. Equally, you're almost always going to hit CPU limitations in a lot of games, because both of these GPUs are so powerful at rendering in 1080p. You can perhaps make a case for either of these cards at 1080p if you want top-flight performance in first-person shooters, and you've got a very strong supporting system with top-flight CPU like the Ryzen 5600X or an Intel i5 10600K. Equally, if you want to play AAA games on a 1080p monitor and you can't bring yourself to turn any settings down from Ultra at all, then these cards enable you to do that. At 1440p, again the 3060 Ti is a strong performer, with the 3070 offering slightly higher frame rates or visual settings, whichever is your preference. But there's no night and day difference between these cards, and if you're working to a budget, the RTX 3060 Ti is the right choice. At 1440p ultrawide, you do see slightly more performance from the RTX 3070, and if you're intending on playing AAA titles at that resolution, it's a great starting point. For occasional or more casual gaming, the RTX 3060 Ti also does well. And finally, at 4K, 
Either of these cards can provide an acceptable experience, but if you're planning a 4K gaming PC, then it really is still the realm of the RTX 3080. I hope you found my comparison of these two GPUs informative, and do check out premiumbuilds.com where we've got all the latest build guides, advice and component reviews in order to help you build your next PC.